Hello and welcome to this lesson on projectile motion, which is part of the mechanics topic in AQA A-level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to be looking at how to calculate the properties of projectile motion. So if we are successful and we learn in today's lesson, we should be able to understand the definition and assumptions for projectile motion, understand the independence of horizontal and vertical motion, and calculate values for vertical motion using SUVAT and calculate values for horizontal motion. So in this lesson, we're going to be looking at the following parts of the AQA A-level physics specification, 3.4.1.4, projectile motion. So a projectile is any object which has an initial force at the beginning of its motion and then nothing afterwards. So the only force acting on a projectile whilst in motion is weight. So projectiles can include javelins being thrown. Now remember, consider any object which has an initial push at the beginning, then nothing afterwards a projectile. So the only force that acts on an object which is a projectile is gravity or weight. Another example of a projectile are bullets being fired. Another example will be packages being dropped. Another example will be objects being thrown. Now a multi flash photograph can reveal details of the path or the trajectory of a projectile. So in this example, once the ball has left the child's hand and is moving through the air, the only force acting on it is its weight. So you can see that it speeds up as it falls because the images of the ball become further and further apart. Now at the same time, it is moving steadily to the right. You can see this from the even spacing of the images across the picture. Now the path, the ball's path has a mathematical shape known as a parabola or parabolic shape. Now the vertical motion of the ball is affected by the force of gravity, that is, its weight. So when it rises, it has a vertical deceleration of magnitude g, which slows it down, and when it falls, it has an acceleration of g, which speeds it up. Now the ball's horizontal motion is unaffected by gravity, and in the absence of air resistance, the ball has a constant velocity in the horizontal direction. Now we can treat the ball's vertical and horizontal motion separately because they're independent of one another because they're at 90 degrees or they are perpendicular to each other. So the definition of a projectile is any object that only the force of weight acts upon it during its motion. Now all projectiles follow the same three key principles. The first one is that the acceleration of the object is equal to g, the acceleration due to gravity, and only acts downwards, so g is the only factor which affects the vertical motion. The second principle is that the horizontal velocity of the object is constant because the acceleration due to gravity does not have a horizontal acceleration, and finally, the horizontal and vertical velocities are independent of each other. Now this third principle is one of the most important ideas in physics because the horizontal and vertical velocities have to be independent of each other. So this means that all objects fall vertically downwards at the same rate irrespective of the horizontal motion. So the su SUVAT cannot be used because SUVAT is not affected by the horizontal motion of the object. So this has some profound effects in the real world. So this means that for a ball thrown sideways, it will hit the ground at the same rate as a ball being dropped. It means that a parcel dropped from a moving car and a stationary car will hit the ground at the same time. And it means an object thrown from a moving train hits the ground at the same time as an object thrown by a person standing still. Now this means that for any projectile motion, you've got to resolve any vector at an angle to, into its vertical and horizontal components to carry out the calculations correctly. So as we've mentioned before, all objects are pulled to the ground via the force of weight. So all objects have a downward acceleration g. So any horizontal projection experiences the same downward acceleration as the other balls. So this means the horizontal motion does not affect the vertical motion, and the vertical motion does not affect the horizontal motion. The only factor which can be interchanged between the horizontal and vertical motion equations is time, because the object is in motion for this same time in both the horizontal and the vertical. So this is important to consider when we look at the motion of projectiles. So if we consider the vertical motion of a projectile, it can be calculated by using the SUVAT or the equations of motion. This is because in the vertical there is only one force weight. So this means that A in the SUVAT equations is acceleration due to gravity minus 9.81 meters per second squared.
Now, if we consider the horizontal motion of the projectile, this can be calculated using the equation that velocity is equal to displacement over time, because in the horizontal there are no forces, so therefore there are no, there's no acceleration going on, because there is no horizontal component of weight in that horizontal. So therefore the acceleration is zero, so we can use our equation velocity is equal to displacement over time. Now, as mentioned previously, the only value which can be interchanged by, uh, between the equations for the vertical and the horizontal is the time taken, because the time taken for the motion is constant for both. So we can use this to come up with some rules for projectiles. The first rule being that horizontal and vertical motion is separate, so consider them as such. The second rule is that the only value you can swap between the horizontal and vertical motions is the time. The third rule is that going up is a positive value and going down is a negative value. Rule four is that there's no forces act on the horizontal motion, that therefore there is no acceleration due to Newton's first law, so therefore we can use our speed equation as mentioned previously. Whilst in rule 5, the only force acting on a vertical motion is acceleration due to gravity, so we use this in the SUVAT equations. So typically, to answer a projectile question, you follow the format. Firstly, work out the time for the vertical motion using SUVAT. Remember that A is equal to minus 9.81 meters per second squared. Secondly, interchange the time taken calculated step 1 into the horizontal motion. And then finally, use the equation that speed or velocity is equal to displacement over time to work out a value needed. Now remember, the assumptions made in these calculations are that air resistance is not present and the object is a particle, which is a sophisticated way of saying that the only force present is the weight. Now, air resistance causes a drag force that acts in the opposite direction to the motion of the particle of the projectile. So, air resistance will call the, cause the horizontal speed and the horizontal range of a projectile to be reduced. So, it will also cause the vertical component of the velocity to reduce as well. This can reduce the maximum height the projectile will reach and steepens the angle of descent. Now, remember, in any projectile equation, you must resolve the velocity into its horizontal and vertical components. The the vertical component can be used to work out how long it's in the air for or how high it goes and the horizontal component can be used to work out how far it goes in the horizontal direction while it's in the air. Now remember, the vertical velocity changes due to the acceleration of freefall, so the vertical displacement and the time of flight can be calculated with the equations of motion, and the horizontal velocity has to remain constant. So let's have a look at an example of how to answer a projectile's question. So an object is released 50 meters above the ground from a hot air balloon which is moving horizontally at a speed of 4 meters per second. Calculate the velocity of the object as it hits the ground, the duration of the descent of the object, and the distance the ball moves horizontally before it hits the ground. So to firstly answer it, you've got to remember that with the vertical air velocity for the first question, that SUVA can be used. So you can say V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. So therefore V squared equals 4 squared plus 2 times by minus 9.81, because it's, the acceleration is acting downwards, times by minus 50, because again we're moving downwards by 50. So therefore V works out to be 31.6 meters per second squared. Now the next question, once again, you can still use SUVA because we're concerned of the vertical velocity. So we can say A equals V minus U over T. We can then substitute in all the values and work out T. Remember to continue to have your minuses present. And we work out T to be equal to 2.8 seconds. Now in the last part, uh, 1.3, as this concerns horizontal motion, the speed equation can be used, so we can substitute our value for time from the vertical equations into the horizontal, so we can therefore say speed equals distance over time, so distance equals speed times by time, so 4 times by 2.8, the time, is equal to 11.2 metres. So in this lesson, we should be able to understand the independent effect of motion in horizontal and vertical directions of a uniform gravitational field and problems that are solvable using the equations of uniform acceleration. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to understand the definitions and assumptions for projectile motion, understand the independence of horizontal and vertical motion, and finally calculate values for the vertical motion using SUVAT and calculate values for horizontal motion. So thank you very much for watching this lesson on projectile motions, which is part of the mechanics topic in AQA A-level physics. Thank you and have a lovely day.